difficult, 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 difficult,
Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it is hard uh, because love yourself. That's like a no duh proposition, it, <laughs> right? Right. It's like, okay, yeah, okay, I'm supposed to love myself. And it's so funny. I was just I had a session with a client yesterday about this very thing. And she said she had talked to somebody and, and she asked that question, how do you love yourself? And the woman, the person said, choose, choose to love yourself, mm-hmm. which absolutely makes total sense. And it's absolutely one of the first steps that you need to do, just like you choose to be joyful and happy, or you choose to be mired in regret and disappointment and guilt and shame, whatever. Yes, you choose. But after that, what? So, Mm. see, and that's the thing. Love is such an abstract. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we we don't even, we think we know what it feels like because at some point, oh, this feels good. This must be love, you know? And then then love makes us feel bad. And then we're like, oh, no, no, I don't want to feel like this again. Love is scary. So because it's so abstract, people don't know what it feels like, right? And again, I made that example of, we feel it, it feels good. We feel it, feel bad. So we either love it and hate it because it makes us feel good and hurts us. First thing, know that love will never hurt you because it doesn't operate that way. There is nothing about love that will hurt you. What you're afraid of, what you're afraid and you're afraid of being hurt by is not being loved. So separate those two things out first and foremost, because if you fear love, you're fearing yourself. If you're fearing love, you are and afraid to attract it. You are attracting the same kind of fear-based love and validation. So separate the two. Love will never hurt you. So the thing I tell people all the time is start looking at your behaviors because behavior it, we, we see behavior, it's manifest, it's physical, it's concrete. But if you look at some of your behaviors, that will tell you a lot about self-love, how much you love yourself. So when you don't love yourself, things like people pleasing, like afraid to um, not even knowing who, what you want, you know, but also what you know, do know, afraid to voice that, afraid to ask for it. Because if I ask for it and they don't want to do it, then they may not want me. And then there we go. Um, so people pleasing, doubting behaviors, um, hiding in places that seem fabulous and good. Hi, you know, a lot of people hide as the badass. A lot of people hide as a shy person, the social butterfly. We all find these pockets that we hide and they allow us to function on seemingly a, a high emotional level of knowing yourself. But underneath all that, it, it's just the facade, Right. So all the things that make you have difficulty in your relationships, those are all behaviors, right? Not trusting people. Like I said, people pleasing, doubting yourself, thinking that you have to be perfect in order to be valid and worthy. Tap dancing for your worth. If I do this, 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 this for you, then you will love me. Looking for other people to show you what's great about you. Those are all the behaviors that are telling you you don't love yourself. And one of the reasons you don't love yourself is because you don't know yourself. So when you fall in love, you generally get to know somebody and begin to notice a little quirks and oh, isn't that cute and da-da-da-da-da. And, and you know, you take the time to get to know them and and understand who they are on a lot of different levels. And then you fall in love. We don't do that for ourselves. We don't know our stuff. We operate on the levels of labels and Mm -hmm. boundaries that other people set on us, labels that we've slapped on ourselves, um, experiences we have that we think define us. So to get to self-love, first and foremost, is understanding who you are and why you behave the way you do. And another great thing to find out where these tips are, are where your gaps are, as I call them, is what you want in a relationship. Mm. Because what you want in the relationship from outside will tell you where your gaps are inside. So if I want somebody who's going to, I can trust and love and adores me, that tells you about something that you're not loving and and adoring yourself and you don't trust yourself. If you want somebody who's going to make me happy, 
that tells you that you are unable to find joy where you stand and make yourself happy. So then those are all kind of the clues that you begin to put together about how you're not loving yourself. It's kind of crazy that like we don't, I guess because of society or whatever it is, we don't just sort of naturally feel this love for ourselves like in this world that we live in. But because one of the things that was really fun about working on your program, working with you, was how fun it was to learn about myself and to be like, I really like me. And like, oh, I have a Aww. nice time with me. <laughs> and oh, you know, and it and it really is. And I think about like some of, you know, in all these little tools and stuff about like, oh, look at yourself and all that. Uh, it, it's fun. It becomes really yeah. fun. And I think it can be hard at first because there is sometimes a lot of people have a lot of self-hate in them that they've been carrying around that is related more to the outside projections and things like that that are coming into you. But um when you start to actually think about it from that perspective, which we never do, you start to realize like, oh my God, like this is way more fun way to live life. It's a way more loving way, loving for yourself and Mm -hmm. and loving to other people too. Um, So I think that's crazy. So so yeah, my um, kind of slogan from my coaching business is true masters learn through joy. And that's really the case. Um, We are all true masters of our own life. But we choose pain, right? Choose love, Mm -hmm. choose happiness. We choose pain in a lot of ways. We've been programmed to do that. Mm -hmm. We've been programmed to believe that um, no pain, no gain, that all the big lessons come from the big boo-hoos, all that. And it's really not true. We are, the lessons are presented to us all the time through our relationships, because through our relationships, we, we see our own gaps if you use them as mirrors. So if we are seeing those and we're listening to the whispers, you know, then we can self-correct on course and keep it moving. But if we don't listen to the whispers, they start, you know, shouting, hey, hey, if we don't listen to the shouts, they start screaming. And then ultimately, and this is what I call life, midlife crisis, you can't run anymore. They have slammed you upside the, the wall. And so I call that, you know, at any age, the big, the epic fail. And my clients do the best when they've come to me at epic fail. Because epic fail is literally just being, uh, you've hit that wall and you can't do it anymore. You are stuck, you're paralyzed, you're so unhappy that I have to make changes. And really what you begin to recognize is that the failure you feel is the failure of trying to be something that you're not. Live in the expectations, live in the boundaries because you can never fail at being yourself. Yeah, I think that that's another great thing is that when you were saying this earlier, but it's like when when you're getting some feedback from the world outside of you to instead of like running the other direction or not listening to it at all and ignoring it, to really take in what that feedback is and not use it. I think what also a place that I was coming from was I'd get feedback from another person or something. Right. And then I would take it on as if it was like this burden that I had to carry. Like I'm a bad person because this guy is treating me badly. Right. Yeah. As opposed to saying like, Oh, this guy is treating me badly. Um, what is that saying about which direction I'm facing right now? <laughs> and how do I move forward To, you know, to learn from, oh, I don't I don't need to be treated like that. I can stand up. I can have my boundary. I can I can fight, you know, not fight against it, but just go, oh, I've been putting myself in this direction. I don't need to do that anymore. Let me change course and be like, bye, guy. Thanks for the lessons. I'm going to keep going now. People's actions tell you where they are on their path. Mm -hmm. Your reactions tell you where you are on your path. And the only thing that you are empowered to change and, and, and do anything about is your path. So that's why we understand that whatever another person does, and even though we feel it's done to us, we are the co-creator of every relationship we're in. Nothing happens for and against us, good or bad for us, negative or positive to us without our co-signing. And so the thing is, where it, what is my reaction telling you, 
me about me and what I'm doing. And if you keep that in mind, it empowers you in ways that you never felt you had choices Mm -hmm. because we're always dealing with what other people did. And I, if they would just change, I could be happy and there's nothing you can do about them. But I promise you, if you would just change, Mm. you will be happy. Yeah. And you have the power to do that. So that's really an important thing to do. And the other thing that's really important If you recognize, and I download this angel message for almost every client at some point, some version of it, is that everybody loves you as best that they can, Mm -hmm. as capable as they are doing. So if you go into every relationship where it's parental, sibling, friendship, or lover, knowing that people are just doing the best they can, and uh aha, so are you. Mm -hmm the self-love lesson is, but is that enough for me? Do I deserve more? Mm. Am I capable of giving more? That's where the lesson is. And the answer to that question is the self-love nugget. Mm. He's doing, she's doing, they're doing the best that they can, but is it enough for me? Mm. No, I deserve Mm. more. Mm -hmm. So thanks for the lesson. I wish you love and peace of soul i'm booking Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. this pairs very nicely with last week's episode i was just gonna say that (laughs) yes so we did a full episode on don't fuck with the fuck boy (laughs) they might be fun but pretty toxic and just i mean to each their own but for us it's like really what do you deserve and knowing your worth and being like thank you for giving me that no thank you i want more and then (laughs) <laughs> but also the beauty of a fuck boy is why you're attracted to that. Right. Right. It's true. We talk the, about that. It's the excitement. It's it's the validation If a fuck boy. I mean, we don't think about, mm-hmm. you know, fuck boys going to fuck. <laughs> yeah. versus, versus we come at it as, oh, the fuck boy wants to fuck me. Right. So, um, but again, just looking for it for what it is. And that's another self love lesson. If you guys are keeping track is Mm -hmm. recognize there is no bad or good. Stop judging yourself Mm -hmm. because if every relationship is a laboratory Mm -hmm. to help you find and help you on your path to learn your lessons and help you on your path, everything has value, Mm -hmm. right? So if you connect Mm -hmm. all these dots, Everything has value. They love me as much as they can. If I'm trying so hard to tap dance to keep that little piece of crumbs of love, what's that saying about me? Mm -hmm. If Mm -hmm. I am judging myself always, then I am not able to to get the lesson because Mm -hmm. it's bad or good. So I tell everybody, look, emotions are your most important thing. They are the GPS for you to get through your life. Negative emotions just tell you you're out of alignment. They shouldn't be judged. Mm. They shouldn't be piled on to ask the question that everybody asks that has no merit, no value, and, and helps nothing of what's wrong with me. Because that's how we stay stuck, right? Mm-hmm. What's wrong with me? Well, shit, if I knew what was wrong with me, I wouldn't feel this way. Mm -hmm. Oh, love myself. Well, shit, if I knew how to love myself, I wouldn't feel this way. So Mm -hmm. what's wrong with me is a wasted energy. Mm -hmm. It's a wasted Mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. It's wasted brain cells. What am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. Because Mm -hmm. you, I have not yet met one person that when faced with the problem can't figure something out. Mm -hmm. What am I doing wrong? And that's where you connect the dots. But if you are so busy judging the emotions, putting them back on you, you can't. So why am I feeling this way? What are my thoughts attached to why I'm feeling this way? What are the emotions attached to why, you know? And what was my intent for doing this? Because we always Mm -hmm. have an intention for every action, right? So those are the kind of things that as you connect the dots, you get more understanding. So the negative are just indicators you're off your path. The positive are just indicators that you are in alignment. 
Your soul is alignment with who you are and where you are going. So what did I do that made me feel that way? Oh, I set boundaries Mm -hmm. and and I set boundaries, not worrying if they didn't like it, they were going to walk away. I set boundaries not to keep people out, but to keep my Mm. respect, my desires intact. And God, and and they're still lapping it up. Okay. Note to self, boundaries, good boundaries about loving me and I can love myself and have, you know, standards Mm -hmm. for myself and respect myself. And by setting boundaries, I am teaching people how to treat me the way I want to be treated. That goes on the plus side. So our emotions, don't judge them. Just let them be the indicators to guide you. And what we also don't do, and I know I'm just blah, 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 is we don't investigate and interview ourselves about your, our emotions. And that's mm-hmm. a key thing. I feel bad. This sucks. All right, I'm going to go have, um, let's go to the bar. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's fuck yes. our way out of it. Yeah. Let's, right? Yeah. So we, it, it's the work to be done is investigate, not judging, but investigating. And that's going to get you to the bottom of, oh, okay. I'm, you know, I'm waiting for him to validate me and show me what's great about me so I can see it. Fuck, I need Mm. to show myself, Mm -hmm. validate it for me, and then everybody else just confirmation of what I already know. Yeah, I think that that taps into like one of the biggest aha moments that I had with you, which is that like, because it's like, and again, you have to kind of experience for yourself when it really really comes because people yeah. can tell this to you like till you they're blue in the face but like that idea that um that like you know you're trying to fill this void with somebody else's love and acceptance but when you're and when you set a boundary at least for me this is different for everybody but for me like when there's a boundary set it scares me to set a boundary because then i'm like oh they're gonna leave though if i say you can't treat me like that but when you work through this stuff you start to set the boundary and then you don't care if they leave because <laughs> because yeah. I because the love that I was reaching for from this person that's throwing crumbs, I can give myself way better. Mm. So, you know what I mean? And then someone else can come along and someone will come along yeah. better. But like that's that's been like such a just like a, a, a release for yeah. me, like a, like a mm. feeling trapped in something where I was like, oh. I actually and I and it's it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to really feel it. Yes. And that's mm-hmm. what you have to kind of go through the steps to like get yeah. there. But like it's it's and it. I, I don't know. That's such a big deal because <laughs> we're I, so many of us are afraid. I think one of the great things you just said, Katie, was you felt freedom. And that's what self-love mm-hmm. is. It's yes. total freedom. It is allowing yourself to be you as you are and being very comfortable with it. And yeah. and the freedom of that is your ability to live your own life in your own way. And that's what we're all supposed to be doing, because as you do that, you inspire other people to do the same. But as long as we're always looking for validation to say what we do um, is OK, we'll never have the confidence or the freedom because it's self-imposed imprisonment yeah, mm-hmm. to do and be everything that we can. And until you give yourself the freedom to not be shackled by other people's opinions and boundaries and expectations, you have no space to figure out who you are. And it's the who you are that helps you determine what you are here. Every soul is here to be, to fulfill a purpose. Right. And we tend to think that purpose is somehow like Oprah large, Mm -hmm. you know, or um, um, Tim Cook large. Mm -hmm. But our purpose can be very tiny, seeming in the global, Mm -hmm. but huge in the impact in that in the global citizenry, because because energy is contagious. Look what's going on in the world. Right. Right now, the dark has the voices. Right. Mm-hmm. It seems that way because they're loud. Mm-hmm. They're screaming. They're obnoxious little shits. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> but um, that energy is contagious. So each of us loving ourselves enough to have the free because what happens with love? Love's language is compassion. It's kindness. Mm-hmm. It is, you know, joy. 
it is, and, and when we mix that with our feminine energy, which is one of the big problems that are going right now in this world cor- correction, is the imbalance of masculine and feminine energy. Mm. Mm-hmm. So when we all tap into our feminine energy, no matter what our gender or sexual orientation or any of all that stuff is, we bring more compassion. We bring on that. So you loving yourself it's how you help save the world. Okay. Let's just put it like that. I love that so much. And it's, and I, I, I really believe it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think, and I, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and if, if, if Katie, you were, if you remember one of the units and uh, successful single uh, and ready is flirting. Right. It's, yeah. It's soul flirting and really helping you understand what flirting actually is on a soul level and how we've kind of corrupted to be, you know, want me, choose me, give me. It's really about how souls communicate, you know, one-on-one in a soul love way and using the, that mindset, it still gets you what you want, Mm -hmm. but it's spreading love. Spreading love. Yeah. And that flirting is more about like loving people and showing your love and, you know, and it doesn't it's not necessarily sexual love. It's it's, you know, just the pure love, love as opposed to being a dick to people. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Flirting is a benevolent act. It is. Mm -hmm. I flirt with anybody, dogs, cats, people, doesn't matter who they are, children, because it's not about wanting something. It's about giving something. And Mm -hmm. the thing that we can give to each other is I see you Mm -hmm. and and you being visible means I want to hear what who you are. I want to all that. That's all anybody ever wants. And so when you are soul flirting, it is really, again, spreading light, allowing people to be seen, being kind, whatever. And guess what? You still get shit. You still get it <laughs> because the law of attraction will always mm. hook you up. Always. Mm. So mm. a lot of it's just understanding who you are, loving yourself, connecting all that together. And in that, in operating out of that self-love, you change the world. You literally change the world. I mean, can you imagine if, if like Hitler loved himself, he wouldn't have done all that shit. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? But it's true. It, uh, let's go take it home to Trump. Yeah. Right. 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 And, you know, there's some parts of me I've always said, well, you know what? Trump was the contrast needed mm-hmm. to show people how out of whack we are. Mm-hmm. But all, everything he desires is he's trying to find love. He's, mm-hmm. he's trying to find the validation from, mm-hmm. you can just see it so clearly. And mm-hmm. one of the things I'll also just say from the perspective, a lot of messages that I download, I was just talking to a, a spiritual friend of mine and a lot of the messages, they all kind of say the perceived chaos. They use that word perceived mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. And it, you really start thinking about, okay, this shit seems like it's cray K as hell, mm-hmm. but the cray, the, the chaos that is being grabbed up is the contrast needed for people to say for this global epic fail. Mm-hmm. We got to go to epic fail because these dumb fucks won't get it together. Mm-hmm. And and the light has to rise up enough to say, all right, let's change this. Mm-hmm. It happens all all. It's, if you look at history, it's happened over and over mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I actually need advice. I have a good, I have a dear girlfriend who talks negatively about herself constantly. And I try to say, you know, that is a choice. You're choosing to say those things and to believe those things. But I'm really, honestly, I I know I can't get through because she doesn't love herself. But I, I really want to help her. Um, do you have any advice as I think as women, we try to rise, we try to, you know, encourage and empower our friends. And it's been really hard because I see how wonderful she is, but she doesn't believe it. And it and it's honestly heartbreaking. And then also, like, I don't want to be around a friend that is constantly 
negative like that, yeah. which is a big bummer because I love her. Yeah. Do you have any advice for any any girls listening right now that are like, oh, gosh, I have a friend just like that. <laughs> right. So is this a friend, Marie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, is it a friend? <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so think about it. Well, so that makes my point, right? Energy is contagious. Mm -hmm. So negative energy creates negative energy. So the law of attraction mm -hmm. says like attracts like. That is simple as it is. Like attracts like. And so negative energy is going to continue to attract negative energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With you saying that you don't want to be around her as much, is your mm -hmm. energy repelling? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we talk about, about dating and stuff like that. It's not mm -hmm. about you're being rejected. It means that your energy is at a level that is repelling mm. another, right? And so you're beginning to repel her because you are at a different, fre you're operating mm -hmm. on a different energetic frequency. Mm -hmm. But think about it, how easy it is. We are trained to notice the negative. We are mm -hmm. trained to chase the lack, mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. And so it's really easy to get into that mindset. And so one of the things, though, I always ask people, we never do anything that's habitual and pattern and over and over unless it has a benefit to us. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So what is the benefit of negativity? What do you think would be the benefit just from somebody who's experiencing it or someone who has been negative in the past? Well, I mean, it kind of the expectations are low. So like you kind of stay in this place. And so when bad things happen, you're like, okay, well, I knew that was going to happen. So it's kind of this like self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't know. I've definitely been there. <laughs> yeah. But so that was a perfect example of how people really have a hard time getting to their emotions. Mm -hmm. Right. So negative negativity has a huge benefit. I mean, I don't know this friend, but I know enough people that have been negative or I work with enough people that, you know, the negativity, but negativity, um, like you said, even though it feels like I'm stuck, it keeps mm -hmm. me in a place that I know and I don't have to take risks right. and yes. I don't have mm -hmm. to be afraid that I'm going to fail. Yes. If mm -hmm. I step outside of this negativity box, I could fail. Mm -hmm. What else? It has the benefit of attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The more I am the victim, the more things don't, right. you know, people give me attention and they love up on me until they wear, I wear out my welcome. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be around her because it's just all negative all the time. It gives me mm -hmm. attention. So you have to look at what the benefit is of your behavior. And see, behavior is just the manifestation of energy, which is, I mean, emotion, which is the manifestation of energy, which is the manifestate, which then you got to get down to the root of what it all is. So if you are constantly negative, what you are doing is creating your own reality. So our thoughts always create the reality we live in now. So what people think thoughts are just these little wisps of wonder in one ear and out the other. They create the life you are living. What you created, thought yesterday has created today. And, and so in or, and this is why the work that we do is, again, transformational, not transactional. That's why it takes a lot of digging, 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 digging to get to the place where people come out at the end. So look this way. Her reality, your friend's reality is I can't you know, I hate my job. I don't have the love life I want, whatever that reality is, right? So where was that reality born? It was born and we're going backwards by her, through her perceptions, through her perceptions that the world isn't fair and you have to be born with it. So I'm not, I'm just putting shit out there. I'm not, I don't know her. So you have to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth and all the, if you're pretty, you get breaks, whatever it is. So her perception of that's the world, her place in it, I'm not pretty. I wasn't born with a silver spoon. I always have to work my ass off and nobody seems to notice. That then informs her actions and her behavior. Shut down, negative. You know, I don't try as hard because why bother? Whatever. That's created the reality she lives. So where do those perceptions come from? 
what she believes. I believe that the world is an unfair place. I believe that no matter how hard you try, somebody who didn't work as hard, da 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 da, is going to get it. I believe that you have to be, you know, go to the best colleges or whatever, whatever the belief is. Beliefs inform perception. Perceptions create behavior that make your reality. Where do the perception uh, beliefs come from? Thoughts. Because a belief is just something you think over and over and over until it's what you believe. And then you go back to your experiences for your evidence to support those thoughts. And so people get stuck because it just is. That's how it is. And so I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. And it creates the reality. So when you stop and you break the thoughts and you create new thoughts, you create new beliefs. You create new perceptions. Your actions are different. So your reality changes. And the thing about it, nothing in the fucking world. I'm sorry. Nothing in the world. (laughs) Nothing else in the world has changed. Mm -hmm. Everything is exactly the same. But your perception has, has changed your reality. And then everything else begins to kick in. Law of attraction, Mm. creating and manifesting, all that stuff. That's a thing that we've talked about in the pod before, too. I had mentioned that, like, at uh, at a point, uh, I just started, like, talking to myself differently. Mm. You know, Mm -hmm. I stopped being like, you stupid idiot, you missed the bus, you're so lazy and Mm -hmm. fat and you didn't, you should have run faster or whatever. And (laughs) instead, I say, like... Oh, oops, little Dolly, we missed the bus. That's okay. We'll just wait for the next one. You know, it's okay. We were we we got distracted. No big yeah. deal. We ran a little late. And like that kind of even just things like that, those small moments when you catch yourself on those, that fully changes the way. Talk about self love. I mean, like yeah. that's just another little totally way to treat yourself better. Yeah. Totally. And then that mm-hmm. that yeah. And 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 the thing about it coming back to what my friends can do or, you know, how do you deal with your friends? Self-love work is inner work. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. And I was just telling like I said, the client yesterday is you can go to psychics, angel scribes, gurus, classes, all coaches, all you want. And we can point you in the directions, but mm-hmm. you got to do the work. Mm-hmm. And it's easier to, to be negative and moan than it is sometimes to do the work people think because Mm -hmm. they're, they're keyed up on that. What's wrong with me and what's wrong with me. I'm afraid I might, I mean, I hate myself now. What am I really going to find? Right. And you don't hate yourself. You just don't know yourself. Mm -hmm. And the, Mm -hmm. and the person that you are operating as is unfamiliar, feels negative because it's out of alignment with your true soul self. And you start to despise that. You start to, to, you're annoyed with that part of you that keeps you feeling the way you do. Mm. But we believe that somehow it really is us because we judge the negative feelings. You see how this all connects. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you stop judging yourself, you just say, I am out of alignment. This, I know I, this isn't me because I don't feel good about this and who I am and what I'm doing. And then it's just figuring out, all right, let me figure out who I am. And to me, and I think to Katie's earlier point, that's why, where the joy comes in. Mm. It's the discovery. Mm-hmm. What I teach you is to find and fall in love the very best of you. And yeah. that, how much fun is that? Mm-hmm. And, you know, even the bad feelings, the quote unquote bad feelings, I like when when you're using the bad th- feelings, quote unquote, as a tool to navigate your choices, it's still fun. It's like a game. You're like, oh, I feel like crap today. <laughs> like, <laughs> cool. Like, that's telling me something. Exactly. About how, yeah. And that and that that makes it less Then you don't get so swamped into like depression and anxiety. Yes. And you can actually be. Yeah. And, and, and it's going back to that point. Right. That question. Instead of asking yourself what's wrong with me because I'm feeling shitty and doing that. Mm-hmm. It's like I, you can say. What am I doing wrong? And you can point to behaviors and Mm. thoughts that are Mm -hmm. creating this shitty feeling and you have the power to change that. Right. Mm. And I think people don't 
especially and I've been there fully. But when you're really mired in depression or anxiety, sometimes you're like, I can't I cannot get out of this. I cannot change it. And it Mm -hmm. and when it's really deep like that, it does take time and it does take a lot of effort. But what's exciting about it is that you can work on those things. You can work on changing them. And and um, and they are just feelings. You know, they're not who you are. Exactly. And here's a great check. I hear anxiety all the time, a little bit of mm-hmm. depression, but I don't really work with a lot of depression, you know, much, but here's the thing. Depression comes when you are looking backwards and regretting mm-hmm. and lamenting things that you cannot change. That's where mm-hmm. depression is born. And, and the longer your thoughts stay in the past, the more depression you come get. Anxiety comes from looking forward and trying to figure out and understand things that you can't control or haven't even presented themselves. And mm-hmm. you're worried and thinking about that. That's how you create anxiety. So if you understand that the best place to stay, to operate, to learn, to grow, to love is in the now. Mm-hmm. All the information that you need is in the now because your emotions tell you are indicators to tell you if you're in alignment. You're, um, when you're living in the now, you are present and you're reading all the cues. You're getting all the, the, the guidance from those seen and unseen. And you're staying uh, in a place where you can actually do things. Mm-hmm. And the next thing you know is, and you're creating the energy that's going to propel you into tomorrow and attracting those great things. So staying in the moment and teaching yourself to stay in the moment is a huge benefit to ward off anxiety and depression. And I start all my clients, no matter what they're doing with this little thing called happy, happy, joy, joy, which is about becoming interactive with your world and living through your five senses. Mm -hmm. So that immediately begins to lift your happiness quotient because you cannot go out and see the gorgeousness of the day and all that kind of stuff without feeling appreciative and, Mm -hmm. and gratitude. So it keeps you in the moment. And as you progress down the line, it teaches you things about who you are. Your Mm -hmm. sensory preferences teach you a lot about who you are as a person. And then as you continue to progress, you begin to notice how divine guidance is being given to you. Because your awareness is strong and you can be in the moment and say, oh, I met that person because blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm supposed to be in this spot because blah, blah, blah. And then as you even go further and you begin to really actively consciously create and manifest, you begin to see the clues that these things are coming to fruition. So get out there and smell some roses. (laughs) Yeah, I love that. That's something everybody could do today is just notice like, oh, what is this? What does the air feel like today? And like, what's the smell I'm smelling? Oh, it's garbage because I live in New York. Okay, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) Not not my preference, but you know, the contrast. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) But to notice those things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. This has been great. Do you have more than the question? I have. I actually have a very big question. Yes. This fascinates me. So I actually, um, Katie, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but twice in my life, I've had complete strangers come up to me and tell me that there are multiple angels around me watching me and guiding me. Total strangers. One time it happened at a hat store <laughs> in, <laughs> in Blowing Rock, North Carolina. One time it happened at a movie theater. And then just two weeks ago, I got a message on Instagram from a stranger saying your ancestors love you. It was so I mean, this happens to me occasionally. And when I was go when I went to your website and you were talking about the angel scribes and how angels, you know, talk to you, I am totally here for this because (laughs) I I find so much comfort in these random strangers come up to me and telling me this because then it does it makes me feel like I'm not alone and that it does make me feel like a spiritual being moving through time and space and that I have protection sort of so would you mind just talking just a little bit about angels and how they speak to you and guide you yeah so first of all you know angels are the real deal they are god's messages messengers mm-hmm. and if you look at the archangels names Raphael, michael jophiel ariel they all except for two sandophon and metatron their names end in el 
which means messenger of God. Mm-hmm. And so they have like specialties, right? Raphael, I work with a lot because he's the healing archangel of healing and michael is protection and security jophiel is the god's beauty um ariel is the lioness of god so angels are literally Mm. here to help and guide us they are available to everyone so you also have guardian angels that are around Mm. you that are kind of you know they're like the privates of the angels troop (laughs) But mm-hmm. they are always there and they um, you can feel their presence a lot of times just because they are energy, because we are energy. The more in tune you are to your energy, the more you will begin to feel the presence. The ability to scribe and talk to them and stuff like that is just a matter of where you are in your spiritual development. Mm-hmm. So when I first started, I, you know, I meditator, a spiritual quest for about 30 years. And I was in Cabo San Lucas, which is my happy, really spiritual place. Everything kind of big mm-hmm. happened there first. And I'm, I'm meditating and it's basically go get a pen. I'm like, what the heck? Go get a pen. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I go get a pen because I'm a writer. I've written eight books. So as I mm-hmm. connect dots later on, y- you begin to understand why they say get a pen. That's my natural thing. Mm-hmm. And they start describing these messages and about me and what am I supposed to do and, and all that kind of stuff. And then they do things that let you know that this is valid. So for instance, I've always hated my name. My middle name is Anne. Lori Ann seems to be like the most country. And if there are any other Lori Ann's out there, God bless you. But I've just <laughs> always felt like, you know, I should be like, you know, Francesca or <laughs> you know, Ava or something like no, Lorian. No, always. And they scribed a message for them. it was like end of a message. And it was almost like, oh, and by the way, you know, nix it with the name. Lo- Lori, Lori is love. Love is Lori. Lori is the messenger of the angels, you know. And so and then the other thing that was really happy that happened is like, for a while, I was like, oh, my God, I'm so fucking special. I mean, the angels <laughs> talk to me and they give me all these messages to give people and blah, blah, blah. And then basically, Michael literally broke it down and I have it on a post-it on a wall. It was like, it's not special. It just is. Mm. And then you recognize that is a power that everyone has. So the angels will work with you. Always ask um, for their help. They will not interfere. Mm. unless mm-hmm. it is something that has to do with your life path that's not but they are not going to interfere with mm. with anything so if you want help you need to ask for help mm-hmm. when i give angel messages angel messages are not predictive they're not like mm-hmm. a psychic message they are messages of support of i see you we love you so many times. Mm-hmm. You were loved and supported. We will not let you fail, you mm-hmm. know? And so when I sit down and describe a message for a client or just any time, I just kind of meditate. At first, I would meditate for a half an hour or so. Now it can be down to 15 minutes, 10 minutes. I just get in that zone because after a while, you just are in that frequency now. So, mm-hmm. so I have to raise my frequency and they lower their frequency. So we meet around, you know, the fifth <laughs> on the fifth floor. <laughs> <laughs> and they just start with a word. I hear these just single words swirling around and it settles in. And then usually it's followed by a sentence. And then I just mm-hmm. start writing. And no matter, I, I don't hear it. I, I mean, I hear it, but I don't, I'm not editing it. It's not, I'm just mm-hmm. writing. And then they'll say, so says the light. And I know the message is complete. Wow. And then, um, and then I, in session, what we do is um, we don't start with the angel message. Mm -hmm. You come to session talking about whatever you want. And at some point, it usually a word, you'll say a word from the message. You'll start talking about the topic of the message or whatever. And then I read the message and then we start working through it. So they're always here with us. Um, I was in with somebody talking to them that I just met and I was in a sales, a meeting one time with an advertising company and I've never met this person. And all of a sudden 
everything around him yellow starts lighting up. I'm like, oh shit, oh shit. And I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to, and I'm like looking away and blinking my eyes and I'm coming back and boom, yellow. And I look over here, no yellow. And then his grandmother appeared. And then what you begin to learn after you start doing this for a while is if something comes up, you have, you're a messenger. You're mm-hmm. supposed to deliver the message. Mm-hmm. And I'm less like, so I know we're, we're trying to get you to clients to invest in this jazz festival, but I was like, is your grandmother or somebody and he's <laughs> and go through and it's like, oh my God, yes, you know, I was just thinking about her the other day because I'm about to do this thing on Broadway and I was thinking about how much you've been and I'm like, yeah, well, she wants you to know, da da da. Another time I'm standing and talking to somebody again, somebody I just, this is like the guy you said to come up and say angels around mm-hmm. you. And I'm talking to him and I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and Again, did you feel like a just a tad crazy <laughs> when people you don't oh, know yeah, that you know totally? <laughs> and you're like, all right, is there somebody, somebody young is behind you, and they just want you to know that mm. they love you, and if you will let yourself love, you will feel them. That's literally the message. Turned out to be his 11 month old son who died years oh. ago. Oh. Mm. So wow. it is, it's a, it's a crazy thing. Or I'll be in the middle of session. I don't know if this ever happened with you, Katie. I can't remember, I but think they just, I start stuttering or I just stop talking and they come in and they're like, look, shut up, you know, step aside, Lord, let, let us handle this. <laughs> you, they just, you just start channeling right there. And I tell mm. people, if it looks like I'm about to have a stroke, just get a pen and start writing. Mm. Cause I will not remember mm-hmm. what is being said. Um, so yeah, they're all around you. And so people who come up to you and see you and say that it's because when we get the messages, we're supposed mm. to deliver them. Wow. And so what you have to, un- you have to think about is a, what was I thinking about? What's on mm. my mind? Mm. What am I trying to figure out? Blah, blah, blah. And so then wh- what about that message resonates with me mm-hmm. there about basically that? Does mm. that make sense for you? Yeah, absolutely. It's quite comforting. Yeah. And they're just kind of gifts, you know, mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. letting you know, I see you. I, you know. Mm. Wow. Oh, my goodness. This was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Katie really has talked. So, you know, I know that she started um, working with you during the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. And I've actually I've noticed a difference in Katie. And I mean, I love her in all shapes and whatever, but <laughs> it's just <laughs> It's really been amazing to watch. Yeah. You know? Just more at peace. I just feel yeah. more yeah. at peace. Well, the funny thing about it is, um, you know, I started with working with Katie, I just, just regular coaching. And I said, you know what? I think you would be great for this. I really want to do this. And what's so interesting, a lot of people find me because they want to find that big love. And that's why the program is called Successful Single ready is because I work with a lot of very successful women who can't find that love. They feel like a success in everything else, but when it comes to their loving relationships, they're really a failure. And um, the key is you have to create the partner you want to have within yourself. Mm -hmm. And that, so if you want trust, Mm -hmm. you got to be trusting if you mm-hmm. want, you know, and, and most people will come up with, well, this is what I want. And when you break it down, they have looking for a travel companion. I can't mm-hmm. tell you how many people have said, oh, I want someone who loves to travel and wants to go wine and we could go to museums together. And I want to, I'm like, OK, you want to travel? Or you want to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. right. and, but it's very telling, right? When you think of your relationship and you're not looking like I want love. I want somebody I can share my love with. I want blah, blah, the, the big things, right? So you want great mm. sex? Well, let's put that on there. If you want, because you're manifesting. And manifesting mm. serious, man. You got to mm-hmm. be, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. be very, um, at some points, very specific. Like all my life, I wanted dimples. Mm-hmm. My best friend, Car- uh, Dina Hughes, in like third, fourth grade, 
had these most amazing dimples. And I just thought mm-hmm. they were so, she had that glass, straight glass, like hair. It looked like glass mm-hmm. and these dimples. Mm-hmm. I asked, I literally would pray mm-hmm. for dimples and I got mm-hmm. them, but you don't mm-hmm. see them, do you? Because uh. I was not specific about what cheeks oh. that I did. Oh. <laughs> I have the two wow. <laughs> biggest fucking dimples on my behind <laughs> so i'm telling you <laughs> manifesting is spirit so, <laughs> so knowing but you can't know what you want until you know who you are right and so it's really important and so people by the time women finish this i, I always have to tell them because they'll come up and they're like i don't even know if i want a relationship now mm-hmm. And Um, and mm -hmm. I'm like, well, and that's great because the big secret to finding the love that you want is to be happy just Mm -hmm. because where you're not searching, because when you're searching, you're always operating and chasing lack. Mm -hmm. When you are just living your best life, knowing who you are, knowing what you want, because when alone doesn't feel lonely, you Mm -hmm. know, you are enough. That's mm-hmm. when you're just doing your own damn thing and bam, there they are. Oh, beautiful. And you haven't wasted any time wondering and worrying where they are. And mm-hmm. is this the one? You've just been having a great ass time because it's about mm. sharing love, not being loved. Wow. Well, how can our listeners find you? Because I'm pretty sure people are going to want to book some sessions. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to um, Soul Coach. S-O-L coach dot co C-O um, to hear anything about all the angels stuff and regular sessions and stuff like that. And you can go to soul S-O-L sexy dot co if you want to hear more about um, SSR, which is the successful single ready. That's like a year long program that I coach you for a year through all this so that when you come out of the other end of it, you are feeling deliciously happily in love with yourself and you have created a successful, healthy, sustaining relationship with yourself, which is the keynote to with somebody else. And uh, you're also on Instagram. I just want to say you, you, you've, you've been on your Instagram. So I just want to direct people there if you want to uh, see some, nuggets of wisdom and information more information and that's um soul sol coach lori so the whole thing is sol c-o-a-c-h-l-o-r-i so follow her on instagram um for more amazing yeah and i do like some instagram tv like angel messages stuff Mm -hmm. or mini workshops and i'd be honest um i would love the follows because i'm trying to I hate social it. media, but I, I am. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> I am building it. I have not. This last year has been about the last six months. I've been really inundated with energy and trying to clear, and I haven't been that active. But I'm coming back towards the latter part of the year. I've just and there's really, stuff on there currently yeah. that's worth going through. So yeah, it's worth follow. It's a worth follow. Mm. I'm going to put all of this, your website, the Instagram, everything in the description below. So please, everybody, follow her. Thank yes. You. Yes. Oh my goodness. And, well, I, and like I tell everybody, right? You are love and you are loved. So act like you know it. And when mm-hmm. you act like you know it, your whole your day will change, your week will change, your life will change. I love you. <laughs> oh, that's it, folks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you wow. for being here. Thank you so much. Oh my God. My pleasure. Anytime. Anytime. <laughs> 